In this video, we'll be uh, studying objective one of HC Verma. So the first question is a capacitor acts as an infinite resistance for a DC AC or DC AC both or neither of them. So we can say an uh, DC has zero angular frequency. We can say DC has zero angular frequency. So omega is zero for a DC and xc is nothing but 1 by omega c so it should behave as an infinite resistance for a dc okay so it will act like an infinite resistance for dc only and the next question there are uh, there is an ac source which is producing some uh, emf like this it has two frequencies one is uh, 100 pi uh, we can say it is 50 hertz and it is 250 hertz these are the angular frequencies 100 pi and 500 pi and the current produced in an rc circuit there's a capacitor and there's a resistor in the circuit so steady state current in the circuit is this we have to find that which current i1 or i2 the current corresponding to this frequency or current cor uh, current corresponding to this frequency will be more we can say as more the frequency lesser will be the resistance offered by a capacitor as we already know xc is inverse of omega is proportional to inverse of omega so as frequency 2 is greater than frequency 1 xc2 will be less than xc1 hence the current corresponding to this frequency will be more i2 is greater than i1 so we get the answer as c what is the peak voltage in a 220 volt ac we can say peak is nothing but rms into root 2 so peak is rms into root 2 rms is 220 so multiplied by root 2 we get approximately 310 so this is the maximum household voltage that is coming in our houses so Whenever an AC is represented by a single value, it will be just its RMS. So 220 is nothing but just the RMS of the AC. An AC source is rated at 220 volt, 50 hertz. The average voltage is calculated uh, in a, a time interval of 0 0.01 second. If you will closely look at the figure, it is nothing but uh, capital T by 2. So this take a look at this diagram so time period is 1 by 50 which is the frequency it is 0 point, uh, 0 0.02 seconds so 0 0.01 second is nothing but capital T by 2 so the average of an interval average in an interval T by 2 may or may not be 0 just look at the diagram if the interval is taken from this point to this point this is T by 2 the average will be 0 this positive area will cancel negative area but if the average is taken from this point to this point again this is an interval of t by 2 so we can say the whole values are positive so interval will not be oh, the average will not be zero so we can say in this interval the average may or may not be zero but if the interval would have been this equal to the time period or its multiple or its integral multiple then we can be very sure that the average would have been zero for sure okay the next question is a very beautiful question uh, in this there's a magnetic field energy in an inductor which changes from maximum to its minimum value in five milliseconds when connected to an ac source the frequency of the source or the frequency of the voltage or current which is coming from the source so we can say as energy is proportional to i square so if the uh, current curve is like this i have assumed it to be sine then the energy graph will be nothing but sine square graph so this is above the graph is a sine square graph from the graphs we can also say that frequency of energy graph is nothing but double the frequency of current this is the time period of current or voltage graph and this is the time period of energy graph so time period is half and uh, frequency is double 
so we have to find the frequency of current so we can say it is half of the frequency of energy graph so 1 by time period of energy into half so again the value 5 millisecond is given the time taken from maximum to zero the time taken from maximum to zero is nothing but half of the time period of energy graph so 5 millisecond is nothing but uh, time period divided by 2 so get so we get time period of energy graph is nothing but 10 milliseconds I have multiplied it by 2 to get the time period of energy graph and half factor is there so by solving this we can easily get 50 Hertz is the frequency of current or voltage graph of the source in the next question uh, we have to specify that which plot may represent the reactance of a series LC combination and the plots are these so we have to find which graph will will specify or which graph can represent uh, a reactance of X XC and XL only there is no resistance in the circuit so we can say Z is nothing but 1 by Omega C minus 1 by uh, minus omega L xc minus xl if omega is very small then z will tends to infinity and if at omega r both these will be equal and z will, will become zero and when omega is greater than omega r or it will increase further then z will become negative in fact uh, z should not be treated as negative but uh, as we are defining z like this so we can say it will become negative so the only graph that represent this type of variation is d initially it is very high when omega is small after some frequency it becomes zero and when the frequency is further increased it become negative and continue to uh, increase in the negative value okay in the seventh question there is a series AC circuit which has a resistance of 4 ohm and reactance of 3 ohm we can say impedance is nothing but uh, square of the resistance 4 square plus square of the reactance 3 square whole root will give you 5 the next question says transformers are used as transformer is based on the principle of mutual inductance which can occur only when the current or voltage is changing so it can be used only across AC circuits okay in the next question there is an alternating current which is given by I1 cos omega t plus I2 cos omega t and we have to find the RMS value of this current so by using phasor method by using phasor method we can easily get the value of this current as this by using phasor method this current can be represented as I1 square plus I2 square if you are not aware of the phasor method then look uh, the video of AC I have already explained that method in detail so I1 square plus I2 square whole root sine omega t plus phi where n phi is nothing but I1 plus I2 so IRMS is maximum value is this IRMS is maximum by root 2 as already root is there so 2 will get inside the root and it will appear like this so option C is the correct answer an alternating current having peak voltage peak value as 14 ampere and is used in heating a metal wire to produce the same heating effect a constant DC current has to be applied what should be its value so we can say uh, this is the peak value and RMS will be nothing but 14 by root 2 for this AC RMS will be 14 by root 2 and that is the effective DC which is required to produce the same effect so 14 by root 2 will be the DC current that is required and it will be nothing but equal to approximately equal to 10 in the next question there is a constant current of 2.8 ampere exists in a resistance the RMS of that current if something is constant then we can say its average its RMS is mean mode median whatever mathematical averages we can take so they will all be same equal to the value so as the 
current is constant we can say the rms will also be the same value 2.8